Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. Have some more car booty this weekend from the car boot sale. So let's get straight on and see what we've got here. These machines were very vintage. This one is the most recent of them, by the way. You can see uh, Fujitsu, Primergy, that thing. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure what's in this machine. It says Windows Server 2012 on the license thing on top of it, so that's basically what we have, hopefully in the way of an operating system. Let's have a look at this thing, see what's in it. Okay, so, well, it's two hard drives down there. It has two hard drives, yeah. Yeah, these just come out. Um, yeah, Barracuda, uh, one terabyte, couple i think the one's the same yeah i can see it from here so there's two one terabyte drives in there identical looks like a complete machine i can see the processor some little graphics card so i don't think there's going to be anything overly exciting it cost me 20 euros might be worth that for the couple of hard drives i use quite a lot of drives of these capacity for just keeping backups of the videos on basically has a little uh, optical drive in there as well. USB 3 on the front and a few more on the back. So that's what we've got. I think the best bet with this one is because it might have a kind of a non-standard power supply. It looks like a, one of these small ATX. Let's go to the other camera. Yeah, it looks like a, a mini ATX. So these can actually be quite handy on their own. I sometimes get machines in full too with these types of power supplies and I can buy them, but if I've got a spare one, that's pretty handy. Yeah, not sure exactly what this is at all. Looks like it could be a 775 or something later than that. I'm thinking 2012, so this probably might be a core I uh, something or other, early one. I guess is one way to find out. So let's connect this to the light bulb current limit to just make sure nothing nasty is going to happen. And if um, nothing nasty does happen, let's try and boot this up and see if it actually works. You can see the light bulbs up here. I'll just switch it to limit. In fact, it is switched to limit. So we'll power this up, see what that bulb does. Yeah, that on and then flickering, that is the PFC in here. So. I really don't think anything's going to go drastically wrong if I just power this up. ATX power supplies and others with PFC often do that with a light bulb. So we'll switch it on. Yep, nothing bad happened. And it's trying to boot up the fans running. Okay, don't hear any sound, but the fan is running. Now the fan's gone off, so it's obviously thinking of doing something. I have the capture card attached, we'll switch that on. Okay, you can see it in the corner there. Let's try and boot this up. So there must be a switch somewhere on this, I would think. Yeah, on the front. Power's on. No bleeps. I need the hard drives. Ah, something's happened. Okay, so it's saying, looks like there's nothing on these hard drives. Um, I heard the hard drive. Let's switch them around. I'm not sure if maybe they're in the right way around. Who knows? I'll try them one at a time. And let's see if we can get this to boot off either of them. Okay, I have just one drive fitted. I'm not sure which is the first or second. Hopefully it doesn't really matter. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's booting. So that is the boot drive. Windows 10 on here. Whoa! <laughs> I 
I think that might have reset it. I don't know. You heard that the fans suddenly went a little bit uh, nuts. Windows 10 seems to have gone away. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I have to say, it seems to have like gone off on one. Nothing's really happening. I oh, can see there's a light flashing. Oh, there's a light flashing down there somewhere. I think that's the hard drive LED that's flashing. Well, it appears that the machine is running, but it can't boot from the contents of this drive by the loops of it. Just uh, hold the power button in, see if it shuts down. Yeah, it does. It shuts down okay. Let's go again. Okay. Yeah, it's booting. And the same thing happens. And the same thing happens. It kind of crashes or something. They Fans go a bit nuts. I could try booting this from my test uh, drive to see if it actually boot Windows from that. That might be an idea. Okay, so I've quite literally poked my SSD into the connector there. What does it do now? Well, it boots, so far at least. Yep, booting from my SSD. Mm-hmm. I think we'll skip that. We'll just find the button, press it quick enough. I'm not too bothered. Mm-hmm. Restarting. Yep, skip that. It's probably asking to check the disk because this is my test SSD. It gets put into lots of machines. Yeah, and it's booted up. So we can say, I think, that this actually works. It's just something wrong with the installation of Windows. Let's have a look to see what we've got here. Well, we have a Xeon processor, 3.3 gig. We have a single 8 gig. I can see there was a single strip in there of RAM. Okay. So that's what we actually have. We won't have the graphics card drivers loading. It's possible the graphic card's failing when the drivers load. That's another possibility other than being some problem with the actual windows so the question is really what to do with this can we get a bit more information on this processor i think the best thing is probably just to take the heat sink off and actually have a look doesn't exactly tell us what that is i could possibly just go and google that okay well, that's telling me it's one of those. Yeah. E31256, that one. By the looks of it. 
I don't think they have any value on eBay. We can have a quick look, but I don't think so. But this says release date March 2017. And this machine, I'm sure, is older than that. I'll tell you what, let's actually take the heat sink off and have it to see what we actually do have here. I've also actually just noticed this has DDR4. So I think this machine actually is a bit more recent than I thought it was, to be quite honest. I'll definitely check to see what we have. I'm not too worried about this motherboard overheating thing here. I suspect it just doesn't have the sensor that this is actually trying to read. CPU is actually running quite cool. So let's just double check to see what this CPU is. And then let's see if this is actually worth anything. But I've got a feeling, actually, this could be quite a handy machine. Well, guys, it's a little bit tricky to get the cage out, to get to the heatsink, to get to the processor. So I decided to do it the easier way, and I'm probably right. So I had a look on Google, and then I found my way onto eBay. So this is actually the machine I have. It's this one. There's one for sale here. There's others, but they're around this sort of price, the ones that I actually see. Okay, it's this machine. And if we look down at the spec, that is the same processor that I effectively Googled from the information, the 3.3 gig. So that is the processor. Mine does have the two times one terabyte. The only thing mine doesn't have is the 16 gig of RAM. I think just one RAM strip is missing, but it shouldn't be difficult to get another eight gig of DDR4. And I think this is a damn useful machine. So I'd be interested to know what you guys think about that, to be quite honest, but I think for 20 euros, this is just a bargain. Yeah, just a bargain, I would say. So, comments below, what do you think? And while you're typing that, I'll go find something else to look at. So here's another machine. This one is obviously much older. A good clue of that is the fact that this says uh, Windows 98, second edition. Obviously, you don't know what's been changed or upgraded in these machines since then. What is a bit worrying is that, kind of like stripped outwards. I had a look inside this just with a torch on my phone. So I know it's a AGP machine. I don't know anything else. I could just see the slot down here, so I know it's AGP. It looked intact from this angle, but that's as much I can say. Two USBs. Probably a Pentium 2, I would think, from the sticker on with the Windows 98 SE. The fact we've got two USBs, but let's have a look and see what we actually have here. I mean, this has onboard sound, if that's a clue as well. So, could be an AMD machine, of course, but we'll see. So, uh, let's open this one up and have a look. This, again, is a type of ATX case where the whole top comes off, which are also the older ones. Back to the front, back to front, yeah. <laughs> we have a CD-ROM, we have a DVD-ROM, we have a Philips CD and DVD. Writer, is it, or just a reader? No, it's a writer, okay. That looks like it's been added afterwards, so something's been changed on this machine. Once we get inside, we'll figure out what else we have and how much of this is original. I was just looking at that Xeon again to just try and get a sense of what that would be like as an i5 or an i7. And it seems to be it's a quad-core processor and from the 3.3 gigahertz. That would suggest it's something like an i5-7600 or i7-7600, something like that. So it is quite a, a capable machine actually. I'm sure you guys will know exactly where that Xeon processor comes in, in the equivalent of an i5 or an i7. Now let's get this lid off. Make a bit of noise. Okay, job done. So I can't see what I have here and you can't see what I have here. So let's do this both together. Here we go. Some sort of AMD, I think. Uh, what's this motherboard? Well, it's an MS, so I can't tell it. Microstore. Could be a Pentium 3. What's this socket here? Let's have a look. What do I have? Can't easily just release the clip on it. 
Okay. Now, I can't just quite get my finger on the clip there. I'm going to just take this one apart. The graphics card's happily sitting in the slot, so I don't know what was damaged here. Yeah, but obviously nothing else was damaged when that was done. Sound card's PCI, you can see there. Okay, so let's just take this apart and then have a good look to see what we have. So here's what we have. I can get this off now, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a Pentium 3, actually. Oh, there's a screw ended up down there somewhere. That's not a, a good start. There's also a capacitor gone here and one there. Now you can see them bulged on the top, so I'll get those two chains before we try this. This is proving... Ah, it's off. Okay, so it is in fact a Pentium 3. Um, 800 megahertz, so it's not one of like the extremely fast two of Latin ones, but still, it's okay. Yeah. This capacitor, what is it? Let's have a look. 2,700, 6.3. I'm sure I've got something similar, probably not that valuable, probably 3,300 I can put. And this one is on the same voltage rail, same value. Uh, the rest look okay, yeah. The rest looks okay on this, actually. A little bit dusty and dirty, but this is what 25 26 years old. Uh, what do you expect? Okay. Right, let's get these two capacitors changed. I'll just get rid of the worst the dust off this and then we'll try it. We have one new capacitor here, another new capacitor here. The rest visibly look okay at least. We have one strip of RAM, what is that? 128 meg of RAM, okay. This is a CNR riser. Sound card model CT4810, PCI. Sound Blaster card, Creative Labs. Probably 10, 15 pounds, something like that. Graphics card doesn't look overly exciting, what is this? Well, it's interesting to start off with. That's what it is, because you see the uh, BIOS he promised fitted here. It's like in the socket that's the wrong size for it. It's like they didn't have the right size sockets, but then all the pins are soldered to the board. Well, for whatever reason, it's like that. I hope that's correct. Anyway, we'll soon find out, I guess. What is this thing? MVGA, NV oh, it's just a Reva TNT2, basically. Yeah, that's what it says, TNT2. We'll have a look in a little while, but let's see if this motherboard actually works first. We're ready to go then. I fitted the graphics card that came with it. I've put the analyzer card in. Power is on. Mains is on. Let's try start this. And it doesn't want to boot. Oh! Well, that's interesting because the analyzer card doesn't want to work. But it is bleeping. Let's put it into the other slot. Let's go again. Alright, it works in this slot. Camera's crashed, but it works in this slot. Let's just restart that. Okay, go again. But I think you saw it. C1. RAM. Okay. So, seeing RAM problem, probably just wants to be sitting actually. I'll just uh, take the graphics card out while I do this. Try it into the slot actually. 
if this doesn't work I'll just clean these slots it feels a little bit clunky that didn't really seem to go in very positively yeah let's just clean these ram slots this is without doubt the most common problem I find these old motherboards a surprisingly high percentage of them actually work as you will have seen if you watch the channel regularly yeah and I know a lot of you guys do watch these booty videos every time yeah so this does seem to be the main problem okay Yeah, I know you can clean them with a rubber eraser on the pencil. But often I found actually this method seems to work best. Just a bit of ISO, a bit of kitchen roll. Continually seat and reseat it. Let the ISO come out of the slots. Okay. I wondered what that was. <laughs> okay. Just take a little while to dry this stuff up. In fact, quite often I'll just take the uh, hot air and just warm the slots. That'll make it evaporate very quickly. Not getting hot, just helps the evaporation. Go again. Paper came at that time. Okay. Once more. Surprising, isn't it? There's still isopropyl in there. Yeah. And yes, it evaporates instantly as soon as you put a bit of warm air. We're getting there. Let's give it a go. Let's see. It won't do any harm if some ISO is still in there. It might stop it from working, but it won't actually do any harm. Okay, let's see what it does. Power on. Start. Yeah, it's gone past that. Just try to do the slot as well. Okay. Yeah, that slot still isn't working, but you notice the other one is the one that I repeatedly inserted and removed the dim from it, and that's what seems to clean them. Okay. Yeah, see that one's booting now. So it's this repeated inserting, removing that makes a difference. Right, let's try the graphics card. You can clean these slots exactly the same way. I'll just point my camera at the screen in case this actually decides to come on. You, know, you see the screen over there. Right, what's it going to do? Well, it bleeped to say there was no graphics card, then carried on a little bit. Okay. I'll give this a bit of the same treatment. Right, let's try that. Okay. Go. Start. Yeah, still doesn't seem to like that graphics card. I'll try my known good one. 
Okay. Hmm, same problem. Okay, so I'll give the AGP slot a good clean like I did the RAM slots rather than just what I did, which is just insert the card a few times. Yeah, that does look rather corroded before trying actually, so I suspect that's what's causing the problem here. I'm just trying with the monitor switched on on VGA. I have occasionally seen problems on old motherboards where they won't boot up if the monitor isn't connected or isn't connected properly. Okay, back to the known good card. Go. Hmm, doesn't like it. Yep, that's my other known good card, doesn't like it either. Let's see if it'll boot with my PCI graphics card. Once again, this is a known good card. Okay, what does it do? The same, that surprises me. I thought that would have worked. That's with my known good PCI card in the other sort, and now it doesn't bleep. Interesting. Back into this one. Doesn't bleep without the analyzer card. Interesting. The analyzer back here. No, it doesn't bleep anymore. The speaker hasn't fell off. I mean, the speaker's still on there, but it sticks at that zero D. Okay, take that out. Back to the bleeping. So, this card appears to stop it from bleeping, but it sticks at that point. Again. Yeah, no lights on the monitor. Okay. Without a cord again. Oh, weep. I think that's bleeping because it's saying there's no graphics card. It 
it's not bleeping because it's saying there's a RAM problem, is it? I mean... Continuous bleep. Let me just get another 128 meg strip of PC1. Well, that's interesting because I've put another strip of RAM in. And what it's doing now is it goes to this 2D. That's normally the code that you see. If the graphics card isn't working, and then it boots up. So it's behaving differently. Let's try this now. Well, we get a, a picture of sorts. The graphics card's got some problems to show you. There, but it does see the graphics card now. So, we'll take this one out. Put one of my known good ones in. Okay. Bleep. Picture. So that fooled me. I should have realised actually with that D4, that isn't the code you normally get on the graphics card. 2D is probably the one you would usually get. So what appeared to be going on here is that the motherboard makes a continuous bleeping or a long bleep without any RAM. You put this RAM in and it goes further but fails on the RAM and then it makes this like long and too short, stops on 4D. I then assumed that that was a graphics card and spent quite some time messing around only to realise it wasn't. Okay, so it's working. Let's see if this hard drive's got any uh, operating system on it. Okay, let's see. Well, let's go into the setup. It's obviously what's us to do that. Let's just set the BIOS defaults. We can get rid of that now because you don't need that anymore. Okay, so. Optimize defaults. Let's see what we get. Well, it's seen the hard drive, that's a good sign. And you think it's going to be XP? Let's have a look. It did say Windows 98 on the side of the machine, if it boots from it at all. Windows 98. Okay. It hasn't found the mouse yet. It'll probably ask for the Windows 98 disk anyway. If it does. And it wasn't until log in by the looks of it. Oh, it's found the mouse. Next, 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 yeah, it wants the disc. I thought that would happen. Well, we can say this machine's working, so let's see if it's worth any money. MS6323 motherboard. Well, there's for sale, for sale, 
cheaper but with 36 posters are probably the same is anybody buying these pension three motherboards any retro collectors out there yeah somebody put on an auction it went for 10 pounds so there you go that tells you something yeah so okay we won't put any value on that particularly although it is a nice thing to have um sound card right let's see we're in the sold listing so ct4810 yeah what i thought about 15 pounds but don't put them into auction sell these things yeah and the graphics card well it doesn't seem to work okay so there you go guys two machines completely different from each other both working i was really surprised by that fujitsu server i honestly had no idea what i bought there and i'm rather impressed this one, I think it is worth about 70 or 80 pounds. I'm happy to keep these things sit on for a few years. I really don't mind. I don't know how the retro market's going to go. At the moment, it's heading generally upwards. So, yeah, it's one of them. Take a chance and see if you're better or worse off. But they don't owe me much money, so it's not that I'm really, like, bothered. It's not as though I have a lot of money invested in each of these motherboards. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be looking for some more car booty down at the sales next week. If I find anything interesting, you guys will be the second to know. Okay, hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.